Welcome to the Will A. Bear Show with Will A. Bear, week two. Um, I'm, of course, Will A. Bear. Um, I know what you're thinking. Why on earth are we doing an RBI baseball themed? Well, I'll tell you why. It is none of your business. We can do whatever we want, and y'all don't have a say. So, there's anyway, it's great to be back. Week two, Will A. Bear Show. Um, Last week, I showed a clip of all the times we trashed our our league champion last year. Uh, we we kind of did give Dad a hard time there. So, um, but through all the chaos, we did have a oracle among us. Will Barry decided to guess all of that right. Um, and here's the clip that we showed last week. Like, I think a dark horse would possibly be uh, Mr. A Bear or, or Didi as yeah. the as the dark horse of the of the uh, of the tournament. Due to uh, Barry's insightful foresight pun, um, he has graciously agreed to give us a clip for the Will A Bear show with Will A Bear. Um, here you go. What's up, A Bear family? Just want to let you know that I'm super excited for this new season. I didn't get. You know, my video on week one, but as the only, I think, third party fan of this, uh, this series, every week I look forward to, uh, to seeing the drama, um, happen throughout the, uh, throughout the season. So keep it up, guys. Also want it noted that after all the hate that B3 got, I called them to win. So keep it going, Mr. A Bear. You guys are awesome. Will Berry, the king himself, of course. Um, expect more of him. Maybe we do a two-host sort of ordeal again. That'd be cool, Barry. Uh, anyway, let's jump into our week two scores, shall we? We'll start off our scores this week with the least competitive game, uh, the four-seed Didi's Yellowstone Bisons against six-seeded Nini's It's in the Bible. The final score, Didi won 185 to 89. That was a butt whipping. Um, class A, it was, whew, it was rough. Fun fact that this was the highest scoring performance from Didi all time, including last year. And this was also the lowest scoring performance all time for Nini at 89.7. Um, frankly, it was just a matter of Didi being absolutely carried by Tyreek Hills 42 and Stefan Diggs 45 90 points right off the bat right there and that almost beat Nini just those two alone and no for Nini no player had 20 points on her team so it was just it was one of those sorts of weeks for the second game my Roethlisberger helper faced off against the second seeded mom's this girlie's on fire team and the final score on that one, I won 142 to 112. My first one of the season. So how about that? The main thing to take away from, from this game is that um, my team had outstanding wide receiver play, especially Cooper Cup had uh, over 30 again. And even I had Christian Kirk starting and he did well, but even on my bench, Amonra St. Brown had 40. So it really didn't matter who I put in. Wide receivers went off. And for mom, uh, <laughs> two studs absolutely failed on her. Jonathan Taylor and Devontae Adams had both under 10 points. So very unfortunate for you. Our third game was tightly contested until Monday Night Football, and that'll make sense in a minute. Porter's seventh seeded first down syndrome faced off against the number one team, Kathy's Gold Digger. And Porter became victorious, 136 to 109. Um, that would be Porter's first win of, as a manager. So congratulations to Porter. Um, Nick Chubb and um, Jalen Waddell had 30 and 40 points each. So a great performance there. But another thing to look at, Derrick Henry had under 10 for the second week in a row. So that's another red flag. For Kathy, she had a chance maybe to get a a shot at the win, 
but she accidentally dropped Justin Jefferson. Um, too bad. And, um, but Tua's 39 kept her in the game, and, um, but Porter became victorious. And we're going to shoot it over to Porter and see what he had to say about his victory. We're here with Porter Ward, uh, first year as a manager. And, um, Porter, I just have to get your opinion. What's it like to win in this league? You know, you just got your first win last week. Nick Chubb had a breakout game, so just yeah. want your opinion. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Who was the reigning champion last week again, you remember? Last weekend? Yeah, last week. I don't know. Who, who was it? I'm, I'm pretty sure you lost to them, right? I did, I did. Yeah, well, I just want to let you know, I destroyed the the number one team in the league. Yeah. Aunt Cappy's not looking so hot. Mmm. No, 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 There's no, There's got to be a no. better way to say that. But, yeah. Um. <laughs> but just one more question before we go back to the studio. Uh, Derek Henry, once again, really struggled. And what's your thoughts on him? I'm taking him out. All right, I'm going to be real with you. That's just not going to cut it in my team. All right? We only take Ws. We had a little hiccup, but that's because Derrick Henry choked the bag. Right? We're taking yeah. him out. I'm pretty sure we're going to put Patterson in there. And get him some reps. You, I'm we, thinking, we need something else. Like Derrick Henry, like that was my first pick. All right, you hear me? First pick, and he's choking the bag. All right, no more of that. That doesn't fly. It's no. not. Nope. We heard it here first. Uh, back to the studio. For our final game, also the closest one of last weekend, Mason's three-seeded Cleveland Massage team played the eighth-seeded Dad's All I Do Is Win, which. I mean, you got that one wrong, Dad. Um, Mason had 137 to Dad's 128, a 10-point game. Very respectable. Good game. Uh, yeah. Um, the key, though, in this one, uh, Mason was absolutely saved by Carson Wentz putting up 28 fantasy points. Um, all players, aside from that, played decent, but Carson Wentz single-handedly got Mason over the top. For Dad, Lamar had 43 points. He was the the main breadwinner on that squad. But then Jerry Judy and Kyle Pitts both were held to under four points. They were a huge hindering to Dad's performance. Um, so you would think that maybe if they'd have gotten some more, it would have been a even closer, if not been a bigger victory for Dad. But it ends up in Mason's favor. And that is Dad's first ever loss to Mason, including last year. He was 4-0 against Mason's team last year. So Mason starting off the season strong, beating Dad. All right, let's go over to the award section. First and foremost, we have the Golden Chainsaw, the MVP of the week for cutting down the competition. And that goes to Didi for being A, the highest score of the week by 44 points to the second best team, me. I had 142, and Didi beat literally the second highest scoring team by 44. Outstanding job. And he remains one of the two undefeated teams left in the league. Mason is the other one. The vacuum award goes to Nini for being the lowest scorer and by 20 points even. The seventh team had 20 more points than Nini's performance did. She's also one of the two winless teams left, along with Dad, our defending champ. So, vacuum award goes to Nini. Insightful foresight, that will go to Mason for Carson Wentz. He benched Trey Lance, who is a better quarterback. Carson Wentz is bad. But Wentz had 28, and Lance broke his ankle or something, and he's out for the year. So... Absolutely insightful foresight goes to Mason. Finally, the Cond Award, that goes to B3. Um, Jerry, Judy, and Kyle Pitts held to 2 and 3.9 points, respectively. Lost by only 9 points, and both of them were projected double digits, so it very well could have been the other way around in that game. So, uh... Before we go over into our new AP poll, I'm going to send it over to Didi, and he's going to give us our way too early grades um, for our draft and um, just see what he, he thought about maybe how it goes forward. So I'll send it over to him. 
Thank you, Will. I appreciate being invited as a guest commentator on the Will Bear Show. Will has asked me to look back at the draft that was held on Sunday, September 4th, and to assign a grade for each team's draft picks for the 2022 ESPN fantasy football season. With only one week of the season in the books, it's probably too early to make a fair assessment of the draft picks made by each team. It's difficult to judge on the basis of one week how the picks will pan out in the long run. Before the draft, each team manager was encouraged to look at the ESPN Fantasy Football website and to conduct mock drafts in preparation for the league draft. There was no shortage of information about players by position on the website. Team managers were also given the option of allowing the ESPN fantasy football computer to make draft choices by auto pick, which selects the highest ranked player available regardless of position. Kathy was new to the league as a team manager and she was unfamiliar with the draft process. For these reasons, she elected to use the auto pick option. Her decision paid off in week one as her fantasy team outscored every other team in the league by a wide margin. In approaching this assignment, I considered different ways of going about the task of assigning grades, but I decided to use the small sample size of one week as the basis for assigning grades. I'm sure that there'll be some second guessing about the approach that I chose. With that disclaimer in mind, I decided to rely upon a familiar idiom that doesn't really require an explanation. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Just as the best test for pudding is the tasting, the best test for determining the quality of players picked in the draft is their live performance. Their accomplishments, more specifically, their points earned on the field speak for themselves. My methodology for assigning grades was simply to add the points earned by the players on the starting roster to the points earned by the players on the bench and to rank order the teams by total points from highest to lowest. Kathy's roster earned 161 points and her bench earned 98 points for a total of 259 points. I might add that her bench players outscored the starters for Porter's team and Bill's team. The table you see shows the roster points, bench points, and total points earned by each team in week one. On the basis of the total points earned, I assign grades for each of the eight teams. Two teams earned A's, Kathy's team with 259 points and Will's team with 235 points. Four, four teams earned B's, Dee Dee's team with 206 points, Nini's team with 192 points, Sabrina's team with 189 points, and Mason's team with 187 points. Porter's team with 176 points earned a C, and Bill's team with 132 points earned a grade of D. The grades that I assigned are at best formative assessments. The summative assessments will come at the end of the season. And with that hopeful note, I am turning it back to Will Abair. Thank you, sir. Accurate as always. And now, finally, <clears throat> we can go to the AP poll. Who ranks where at the end of this week? Uh, this is cumulative of last week, so we'll get started. At number one this week is now Didi, 2-0. Was ranked fourth last week. But 2-0, he has the most points scored by the undefeated teams, and he's number one. Number two in the poll is Mason, the other undefeated team. 
Numbers three through six are all one and one, and all of them, ha it's kind of a circle, a uh, win, 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 and it kind of goes like that. So it was judged off of points scored. Number three is me, one and one. I was five, but now I am three. Number four, Kathy, very good, respectable. Five seed is mom, and the sixth seed is Porter, but all of those are one and one teams, so still not that much space to, to breathe. The seventh seed is Nini, just a really rough week this week, but you'll get him next week. And the eighth seed is, of course, Dad, who has struggled to get off the ground after the championship game. So that about concludes for the AP poll and for our show today. Um, make sure to check your fantasy lineups and to check into the show next week. I'm Will Bear, and I'll catch you later.